Soccer Sensei is Rodrigo Salazar and his Artunda special guest, Daniel Niari, who is responsible for this beautiful piece of artwork behind me. It's called The Playmakers, and Daniel is a graphic designer artist based in uh, New York City. And as soon as I saw your artwork, I was like, I need to have it. And we were always looking for something to put in as a background for our set. And it was the perfect um, accoutrement for it. Excuse my, my French. Really captures everybody's, uh, you know, everybody's, I guess, favorite player. And if you think about soccer, about football, everybody wants to be that playmate, you know, in life, in football. So, Daniel, you know, thank you for joining us. Um, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, I was, I'll start where I was born. I was born in Romania. I lived there very briefly, and my family relocated to Austria. And then I also lived briefly in Germany before my family again moved to New York, where I've been living here since the late 90s, so it's a pretty long time. Um, I didn't start out as a, as a designer and illustrator. I went to film school, uh, but afterwards I eventually just fell into illustration and graphic design through a series of freelance jobs. And then I realized this was really for me. And here I am. I've been freelance now for close to five years. How did you get into, into football? Like, what, what was the thing that made you get into, into the sport? All right, so, of course, I'm European, right? So we, it's either football or electronic music, right? We have to love those two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love both. But um, my father actually played um, semi-pro football in Romania. So as soon as I can remember, it was always on TV. He took me to local matches. Um, I was very young, like four years old. He took me to matches, which is not very responsible for a father, but especially in Romania, you know, chairs flying around and everything. But, um, you know, when I wasn't playing football, I was drawing football. You know, I collected stickers and cards. Um, you know, those old Panini stickers and those cigarette cards that had like, which are very much, inf which influenced what I do now. It had like, it cropped the players by the chest and the head. And they were very old school, so I remember drawing those, and it's something I always loved. I I grew up playing it, um, and when I started becoming serious about illustration, I just decided I have all this football work in my sketchbook. Why don't I just try to integrate this into my work? And you know, because of social media and Tumblr, I just put it up online and it became really popular. So I thought, wow, it has an audience. So you know, why not just continue doing it? It's something I love. Um, and, you know, there's a saying, um, you should always do what you used to do in private as a kid. If that's something you love, try to make it a, a profession. That's sort of what I'm doing now. So football art has become a source of income. No, and I know you, you do some other other work as well that's yeah. not football related. Ellis is actually from Albania. Uh, so he, he, yeah. he definitely uh, knows about the flying chairs and stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's in Europe, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I definitely can relate to Daniel. <laughs> can you tell us about some of your other clients outside of football? We're going to get back to the football, but outside sure. of football, who have you worked with, uh, you know, on, on that end? Uh, well, I've worked with editorial clients for uh, GQ, Wired, ESPN, uh, Men's Health. I would say those are the most recurring clients because uh, most of my work is still editorial for magazines, publications. I've also worked for MLS for football related stuff, um, Microsoft, among others. And um, recent, most recently I worked with Universal Pictures for a film called Black Hat. I was doing some promotional artwork for them. Okay, wow. So uh, how did you pick the players that were on you? There's obvious ones. Right. You know, um, Valderrama, Colombian, thank you very much. Put him in the middle. That's, thank you very much. Everyone's in the middle. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, of course. The Golden Rocks. Back, so, you know. Everybody comes around. Mariona, <laughs> obviously, you know, Platini. But how did you come into say, okay, I have to definitely have these, this guy because, you know, there's a specific um, amount of players and there's many other playmakers you could have gone with. Yeah, I mean, um, first of all, one of the biggest reasons I did that poster is because I, I love football history. You know, moving around so much, I don't have an allegiance to one club. So I kind of became a fan of this great team here, or if a great team emerged in the late 90s, I love that team. And then the great Pep Guardiola Barcelona. And just, I fell in love with, with, with the kind of 
other teams that can just pop out in history. And similarly with players. And so it was just um, doing research, culminating um, research of, of trying to trying to allocate players for each decade. You know, I tried to be very selective. I tried to select someone uh, as far back as the, the 30s, you know, to recent and, and cover really a wide spectrum. So it was just um, initially I had a list of like 40, 50, and I was just narrowing it down. I spoke to a bunch of journalists who are friends and bloggers and various other experts of who to include. Um, so, yeah, it was, just, uh, it was just about finding the best balance. I mean, sometimes I still get complaint emails about why I didn't include this player or that player, but it was really just about selecting a, a small group that fits on, on specific proportions, and it, it was just these 25. Yeah, our, our friend's a Boca fan. He's like, oh, where's, where's the Boca Boca Juniors guy? Of course you have. Yeah. So, Francis Corley, thank you. Not another thank you for that. Uh, it was yeah, be, I mean, that a, that's a, was a very difficult decision to make. I, I can imagine. Yeah. So, will there be, like, Playmakers Part 2? Because you said yeah. they have 45. If there is, it would, no pressure, it would though. be very interesting. Because, you know, there would be, like, Raquelme would be very interesting. But he would probably stand out too much in terms of quality to some of the other ones. This was originally actually done. Um, when you draw, when you draw Rick Kelman, can you draw him really slow, like the way he plays? Like yeah, 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 exactly. Take three, yeah, really take three slow. hours to, to do the, to do it. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. No, that's why I love Rick Kelman. Rick Kelman is one of my favorite players. That's the style I love playing. Think first, you know, and then you know, get criticized for all kinds of stupid reasons. Kind of like Ozil, right? Mesut Ozil, kind of like I, one of my favorites, you know. And, and the criticism is all very, very. Uh, Pointless, but um, yeah, I love Raquel Knight. And um, this was actually part, Playmakers was part of a larger project of doing um, legends for different positions. So I would have like um, famous defenders and then strikers and then goalkeepers. It's just that after I finished this, you know, my career just became such where I never really had time to go back and do these. But I'm still planning on doing them, so hopefully I expect more and I can finally do famous strikers, goalkeepers, defenders. Uh, how do you think soccer has evolved so much here in the States, Daniels? You've seen, as you mentioned, you came here in the early 90s, and I mean late 90s. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I came in the mid 90s and I, back in the days it was hard to even catch a game on TV. Incredible, uh, right? Yeah. Now we see that it, it you can you can pretty much watch any league out there through these uh, through the networks. Yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. I mean, I think I think it's one of the most interesting things to watch right now. The soccer development in this country, uh, not only in in terms of development of its own league, but in terms of how American culture perceives soccer internationally. I mean, we spoke about the influx of, of international soccer. You know, even I would go as far back as saying even like a decade ago, it was mainly English football, the premiership football that was most popular. But now we watch um, Fox is getting the Bundesliga rights next year. Um, we're able to watch a lot more soccer with being sports, Spanish soccer, French soccer now. Um, and that's going to change the, the makeup of how people choose their teams. It's not only going to be English teams anymore. People are going to have choices. They're going to be able to choose between... Spanish teams, German teams, um, and I think that will also play a large role in educating everyone, specifically media. I think the U.S. media is also very, I don't want to be too critical, you know, I don't want to be controversial, but Come on, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, there's, there are fundamental problems in how U.S. soccer perceives itself and soccer and itself relative to the rest of the world, you know. Um, and that reflects on its league and the criticisms with Klinsmann. I mean, if you guys follow U.S. soccer, yes. um, he's come under very, Scrutiny. very, yeah, very aggressive attacks. You know, he's not taking the team where where everyone wants it to be. Uh, he's not doing the right things. But it's very generic arguments. Um, and Klinsmann, I feel like, wants to create a precedent for where soccer can grow. You know, it's not about um, what's happening now. It's about the groundwork he lays for the future. And I think in doing that, he's also creating a space where we can, the way we 
talk about football or soccer changes as well and needs to change. And I think Klinsmann is a good example, a micro example of how U.S. soccer can evolve, where it was, where it is, and where it can be. And it's exciting. I mean, if you look at the MLS, what they're doing, they rebranded last year, a step in the right direction. Speaking of, of uh, cut you off, but platforms and media, uh, our friends at Fubo TV, F-U-B-O TV, they're doing some really important work now. They have an app on Roku. They have a website. And what they're doing is they're getting feeds from different um, teams, like like Everton TV, uh, uh, Bayern, not Bayern Munich. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They have uh, Everton. They have uh, Borussia Dortmund TV. So they're they're getting that 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 content that if if you're a Borussia Dortmund like fanatic, you're gonna want to watch that, and it's it's gonna be available now. So you know they're, they're doing some good stuff as well over there with Football TV. Um, going back to Klinsman, it's 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 funny that they criticize him so much, but then when you think about it, which, what what other coach could have done better? Uh, again, got a better result at the World Cup when it really counts than Klinsman, you know. And oh, you know, you need American an American soccer coach, but who who can you get like to 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 get be in front of this this squad that's going to be better than him? And, and friendlies are one thing, but the World Cup is another thing. And they stood up for the World Cup; they were there. Um, and I think I think the, the the player has to move back and forth. You know, it's great that they're in the United States; that's wonderful. But they need to prove themselves outside of this uh, this country as well. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, um, with Klinsmann, it's it's it's. I really think the the U.S. media emphasis on re-educating the U.S. media on how to really assess what he's doing. I mean, you know, if from Klinsmann's point of view, right, his plan is to to change U.S. soccer for the next two, three decades, right? So when you want to do that, you have to make steps that are very radical, right? You have to experiment with with tactics in a way where it's such a large departure, right? Playing a 3-5-2 with... Who, th who would think to put Breck Shea as a wing back, right? You know? I don't think... It's very hard to imagine another U.S. coach doing that. But he does that. And it's going to be... Yeah, it's a trial and error step and it's going to be risky, but it's that kind of move which not only... It opens up the space on how you can perceive tactics, right? How, how far can you go, you know, stepping out of the, the um, uh, conservative mindset, right? It's doing all these things, and naturally there are going to be stumbling blocks, right? And then, but if the U.S. media sees that, they'll say something like, uh, Klinsmann fails to integrate Shea, the U.S. loses friendly, you know, just like that, instead of larger instead of the larger picture so I think the US media is, is in, in many ways at fault for creating these very extreme narratives which you know uh, miseducate people mm -hmm. that do you play FIFA at all FIFA 15 or series I, I'm more of a pro evolution soccer guy oh okay yeah, I've never got I've never played it so but I heard there's there's good there's good stuff with that I, I've never I'm a FIFA it's guy. more realistic to me oh, FIFA really? for me always feels like the ball is on a rope you know it's, it's <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes it's, it's iffy but Break Shea is not bad on, on FIFA for some reason he oh, came really? up and, and, <laughs> and I got him and he was not bad and you know he's like oh he's American he's a he's like fifty or fifty five and he wasn't that bad I'm not saying that Chris was playing FIFA and, and did that because of that but it's interesting to see that tell us about your brother also. Uh, Daniel. Okay, um, I have a brother, a twin brother. And oh, you're twins. He's I know you're the twins. US media manager for Bayern Munich. Um, we were both part co-founders of Bundesliga Fanatic, which is a, a US language Bundesliga blog that started in 2009. Um, and we both left that. He left it for to work for Opta, a statistics company, and that led to a position uh, for Bayern Munich. Um, Who's a better soccer player? Uh, who's a better soccer player? <laughs> uh, he's more. Uh, I, I always like to say he's more. He, he's more like Gerard. You know, he, he likes to play midfield. He works harder. He's more athletic. But I'm more like Raquel May. I, I like to think more and make more fancy passes and things like that. Um, but he'll always run more. He'll always, you know, he'll always be a little more involved. If we play pickup game, it's always more important to be. 
more athletic right nowadays. Um, I don't know. Right now, I'll, I'll be humble and say he's the better player. Cool. cool. Sure. All right, cool. But Daniel, thanks a lot for joining us, man, on Osaka Sensei's, and definitely check out his website. I am Danny. I am um, um, yeah, D A N Y. It's um originally it was um it was meant to combine my my first name and last name, the first two letters of each. Um, and it's also my nickname, Donnie. That's what I grew up being called. So it was a very convenient thing. Cool. Um, yeah, I am Donnie. Dot com. Okay. Please go check it out. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Thanks for joining us. Danny. All right, man. See All right, you. thanks, guys. Thanks,